Good afternoon. I'm A. Allen. You're on with Streetwise live for the next 25 minutes on Can TV 21. We are also streaming live on CanTV.org slash hotline. You can also join the conversation by calling 312-738-1600. I'd like to welcome Tammy here on our show. Thank you for coming out, Tammy. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Tammy, could you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, my name is Tammy, and I'm a streetwise vendor. I've been with them since February of 2017. I'm at Broadway and Roscoe Starbucks. <laughs> okay, so how do you like it? I love being a streetwise vendor. I've had the opportunity to do some topics, some articles, and I enjoy that a lot. I like writing and I love my animals that come to visit me by Starbucks. Oh, you into animals too? You like I the love dogs? Them. Love okay. them. Yeah, that's good. Love them more than well, life. Well, listen, you know, I like to say one thing since we have you on the show. One thing about the men, right? The men, they do not have to panhandle. I know that because I used to panhandle, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I have tried selling drugs on the street too. Okay, this mm -hmm. is, these are the things that men do, you know, in order to get money. But you being a lady, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all the women at Streetwise because one thing is prevalent. Uh, women, you know, they have a way they can get money, you know, mm -hmm. they can easily sell their body, but obviously you're a beautiful lady and you don't do that. You no, choose I sure to, don't. <laughs> you choose to sell streetwise. Right. And, and I really right. appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what brought you to streetwise, Tammy? Please. Well, I believe I was job hunting some, and I have a friend that did the magazine. He suggested I go in for. Uh, orientation. I think I asked him if I could borrow a dollar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he said, "Go make a dollar." So there you go. that was that was good for me, and I like it. I like being a part of something. I volunteer on Thursdays to work in the office. Yes, sir. And I've had about eight topics or reviews, which I've done one with you before for the Black Panther. So. Right, right. So that was good. I enjoy that a lot, and I enjoy writing, and um, I like. Connecting with the people, the neighborhood people, it's a nice thing to do. Yes. And of course they bring their dogs, so okay. that's the best part. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then not only that, I always compliment you on working at desk because you're very professional and so when people come to Streetwise, the person at the desk is the one that, that gives them the first impression of Streetwise. Mm -hmm. And I think you do a very good job at the desk and I want to thank you for doing that. Well, it's a nice place to be that um, when people come and it's not easy selling a magazine. It could be good and sometimes it could be discouraging. You know, it's not always a great day. Some days are good, some days aren't the best for sales. But when you come in and you're able to sit and break bread and reprieve and you also, you, you're with your um, this connection of people that are involved the in the magazine. You yeah, know, you sit, network. you talk, right, and there's people there that you could talk to, get help with things, and just be a part of something. So it kind of replenishes your something. So when you yeah. go back out, you've had something, you know, positive connected, and you can go back and have a new start to your day. I hope some streetwise vendors are, are watching this because this is what the point I be trying to make in the all vendors meeting. Stay connected. Mm -hmm. Okay, I yep. think that's basically what you were saying right. about the organization is to be connected with the organization. It's not so much as just going out selling papers and making money for yourselves, but to stay connected. Right. And this week we have Black Klansman. Uh, the Black Klansman. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is kind of interesting because when I first heard about this movie, I, I was in my mind, I was thinking about this black guy up under the hood, just like on the cover, yeah. on the cover. But it's not necessarily so. We saw the movie, we went to the movies together like we did the Black Panther, mm -hmm. and then we was asked to give our opinion on what the movie was like. So, you know, you was a lot of fun at the theater, at the, the, the Davis Theater. Yeah, it was a good show. And so now I'm going to ask you a little big question. What did you think of the movie, The Black Klansman? I liked Black Klansman very much so. I am a big Spike Lee fan. I've seen the majority of his movies, uh, minus Chirac, I did not see. But I, I love his stories. I love the music and the, you know, the play into whatever it is. Because it, it focused on 
one when it was the college students at the black the black uh, black history club or what it was the black organization at the school they had a speaker that talked about the beauty of of their beauty and it wasn't going to be the same beauty as the other beauty but it was and then they flashed to all these magnificent faces that were in fact beautiful all faces are beautiful but the differences between you know that they're not going to be called beautiful but they are and I enjoyed that I love his music I love the music they play it's always very jazzy and smooth and so it had both extremes the clan organization and then it had well not so much the extreme on the other side but it showed the um not black power but black right. pride black pride and how they try to strengthen their own organization and then from that to how it is today uh, very quickly you know how much emotion and strength is behind the feelings and the expressions there are today it almost showed it where there was more of it now than it was then but it wasn't but how it showed like the anger the rage of everything happening today when the things happen and the when these things happen like the what was it Charleston yeah. happened and the people around it and the fellow that drove through the crowd and killed somebody it was an innocent bystander you know it wasn't even who whatever he thought he was aiming for it was just someone just someone there and that seems like it's more the case than who it, whatever it is you're aiming for it's someone innocent just an innocent bystander right. you know and that's a shame it's all a shame and just like what the what the Ku Klux Klan was talking about, how he spoke, the gentleman that played the leader of this, you know, peaceful existence, but for you to need to distinguish a whole race or every race that's not your own to get that peaceful existence is what's ludicrous, you know. Yeah. We should be able to live that way together. Yes. And it's saying that we can't. And you know, I really admired your perspective of things because the part that you was talking about was when the guy was speaking, which I know him as Stokely Carmichael, and mm -hmm. he was saying that black is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then they were showing these pictures of these uh, uh, people, mm -hmm. black people. Focusing on And their, then you were saying faces. that, you know, I, th I think the pictures was beautiful. And that was the whole... That was the whole concept about his speech was that black was beautiful because I came up in that era where black people thought they was ugly. Yeah. They thought they was... Which uh, is a shame. Yeah, they thought they was bad because they was black, okay? Mm -hmm. And so with this speech that he was given that black is beautiful, you know, it, it kind of built up the self-esteem of a lot of black people. You know, which is sure. which is carried on today. You know, uh, back then they was uh, <clears throat> they started wearing their hair naturally. Mm -hmm. You know, it was no more um, uh, perming your hair to mm -hmm. make it look. You know, like it was no like lie, was, no straightener. Yeah, none mm -hmm. of that. So, you know, uh, I can relate to his speech, and I'm glad you brought that up because black is beautiful. And you were talking about this after after we saw the movie, and I said. You were saying it in so many words, and I say in so many words what you're really saying, that black is beautiful. And I really liked it that. Mm -hmm. I really liked it that. So, <clears throat> in the Klansmen, in the Klansmen, um, <clears throat> was, you, was you surprised that, that this guy actually infiltrated the uh, Ku Klux Klan? Uh, I thought it was very um, interesting and very believable how they did it with the two different people I know it was thought to be like outrageous back then and sure because if they got caught it would just be uh, doom doom <laughs> you know and the doom. other fella that was that was actually the guy there going into the place was I, I believe he was Jewish so right, right. you know doom for both of them doom if they actually caught them they probably would have set up a flame or something that they do and they didn't do that you know they didn't right. get caught right that was a good thing uh, it was very good yeah. and his speech was very good but I don't necessarily believe that other you know other people in the black ethnicity african-american ethnicity can't speak like that too right. you know he just was really good with putting on his voice but you know a lot of people talk 
like that too. But uh, yeah, it no, was interesting. It was good. He was very good on the phone. Yeah. You know, you would think he was just one of them. Right. Nowadays, nowadays, people, black people can speak like he spoke back then, but that was back then. Yeah. You know, it wasn't really too many black people. They weren't people. expected to be right. able to speak. To be able to speak like quite that. as well. Right. And so that's that was the whole key. Not that's what got him in was his voice because he was able to speak well. Mm -hmm. And then he had told his captain, he said, he said, not only can I, sp I speak well because he wanted to go undercover as a drug agent. And he said, no, we can't send you undercover as a drug agent because you don't sound like you're from the hood. You don't sound like you're from the street. Right. And he said, I can sound either way, right? Right. That's what he said. He, he said, can do both. He can do both. He can, he can talk proper and then he can talk slang. Yep. Okay, that's he what did. he was trying to say. But he talked it very proper in order to, he was talking to, um, the uh, Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, and he got David in. Duke. He, yeah, David Duke. He got in by way of telephone and the way he talked. Indeed. Yeah. Yes, he did. And the man from the local chapter, initially. Right. Right. He right, spoke right. with him first right. several times before he was introduced to him, and then went on to speak to David Duke on the phone. So overall, how how did you like the movie? And would you? Recommend the movie for other people. I would recommend it. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I've i always been a fan, of, again, of Spike Lee movies. Um, I liked the story. It was very good. And it showed... I think the biggest thing for me was that it showed yesterday and it showed today. It almost seemed to me that it was showing more emotion, which I'm sure is not the case, but it showed such a... A rage of emotion for today and the anger backing all of the things that they're speaking of you know that almost seem more it almost seems more enthralled today than it did then which I know is not the case but it showed it like the the fire you know the fire of burning and just everything that's connected and how angry someone can be today at the things that are happening but then when you take that and you and you can't be objective about it, I guess. And then you go do something with what that is ensuing in you, you know. Right, right. They were very angry, the people that they showed from the scenes, the later scenes. Oh, yeah, at the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, so me. what's different from them than today? You know, I mean, it is different. It's significantly different. But the rage that you see behind people's feelings and emotions and the... The events that they showed today are very, very real. Very, very real. Yeah, yeah, they are. And if you want to know more about the Black Klansmen and uh, Tammy's point of view, all you have to do is buy your Streetwise. And we have it right here, an interview. This is myself, this is Tammy. That's it. And we, we did an interview right after the um, movie. And we gave our opinion of the movie. You know, and Tammy, I really want to thank you for coming out, coming to the show. Thank and you. Thank you for being cool. Always a pleasure. With Streetwise, and thank you for representing Streetwise in a very good way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Me. Appreciate it. And now we would like to welcome uh, it is Suzanne. And so, Suzanne, I think you want to come all the way in. All right. Coming all the way in. I'll come over to here. And I may have to zoom in on some of these stories. So, of course, I'm talking about Black Klansmen. Part of this story came from one of our sister papers in the International Network of Street Papers. Uh, what happens there is we write stories for each other, and sometimes we recycle them and send them to another paper. So a particular paper did an interview with Ron Stallsworth, who is the policeman who infiltrated the Klan years ago, and then we decided to supplement with comments from um, Alan and Tammy, two of our vendors, and our production manager, creative designer, Dave Hamilton, and our director of programs, who's a social worker for the vendors, Amanda Jones. Um, one of the other things, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the stories that are in the magazine. Um, I like to talk, I'm going to have to see if I can zoom in a bit. Um, I talked about two stories here. This particular one is St. Brendan's in Englewood. The Jewish Council on Urban Affairs gave a $100,000 pre-development grant to Interfaith Housing Corporation for 25 units of supportive housing um, in this building. They are going to be creating um, 
19 units for homeless individuals with a chronic disability and the remaining six will be targeted to people from the state referral network. And the reason I thought this was interesting, I wanted to give Jewish Council on Urban Affairs the play. Um, but I also wanted to point out it's $100,000. It's a pre-development grant. And um, it's a pre-development grant. In affordable housing circles, they call it lasagna financing. And that means layers of financing. It takes money from private sector, from the state, from the city, from the federal government, because it's like $300,000 for each unit of affordable housing. So it's not easy, it's not cheap, but this is a really good use for this building in West Englewood. And then the other story on the page is Chicago Coalition for the Homeless is moving to repeal outdated panhandling ordinances. Um, actually, Chicago Coalition for the Homeless is joining the American Civil Liberties Union of Illinois and the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty. It's a national effort targeting 22 panhandling ordinances, and they've targeted especially 15 communities in Illinois. Aurora, Carbondale, Champaign, Chicago, Cicero, Danville, Decatur, East St. Louis, Elgin, Joliet, Moline, Oak Park, Peoria, Rockford, and Urbana. So in other words, not just Chicago, not just suburbs, but downstate. And what they're saying is that people who are homeless have a right to panhandle, people who are poor, and their speech is not any less protected because they're poor. They have a First Amendment right of free speech. And you may not like the message if you're a city official concerned about the image of the city, but they're entitled to panhandle until their needs are met. And so they say one of the things that is actually more important is that rather than targeting people who are poor because they're giving a message that maybe gives an unflattering view of the city it's better to perhaps come up with a creative out-of-the-box program such as a day shelter for them so you philadelphia does this they're bringing them to a day shelter in an unused transportation station downtown and so they're saying maybe this is a better idea and indeed it is because if they're going to a day shelter they're making contacts with city social workers and other private social workers and that may help them get down the road and their needs are being met so that's these are two shorter stories that we wanted to focus on uh, and since this is our last show for the 13 week quarter and we're going to go on hiatus until we come back hopefully looking forward to seeing you again it's been an honor to be here I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the other editions we're working on um, the paper we just sent to press yesterday, it's coming out next week, is our October 1st issue. That's going to be on the Chicago Marathon. Uh, the vendors find that selling magazines that are about stories that are happening on the street, such as Taste of Chicago or the Air and Water Show or the Marathon, work very well for them. Uh, a couple of reasons. It tells people about what's of the moment. And it also uh, talks about things in a broad concept. It also draws in tourists who maybe want to have a souvenir to take home. And so a Chicago street magazine does the trick, especially since some of them come from countries where there are other street papers. There's a number of street papers in the UK, the United Kingdom. There's a number in Germany, Norway. There's a few in um, Africa, South America. So they have this magazine and it's of Chicago. So. Uh, one of our staffers is actually running the marathon, Allie Maloney. She did a mile-by-mile -mile guide, and she talked about, to people about how they could take public transportation to visit various spots on the marathon and see their runner and cheer them on, and um, maybe where they could have coffee in case it's hot or cold out, they could get inside and give themselves a break and why they should cheer people on. The Chicago Marathon is one of six major marathons in the world that people like to get stars for. I think it's Boston. Um, I'm forgetting some of the others. I know Boston's one of them. So we're right up there. It's a, a big point of pride for city officials to promote the city. Uh, people from all over the world come to Chicago to get one of these six stars. So we want to help out with that. We want to help people understand that Chicago, Chicago is also a great marathon because it's flat, so people make great times here, which helps them to qualify for other marathons. So we're promoting the city 
because tourism is a job that people can get into as a starter and it gets them on the road to maybe a better job but it also teaches them everything retail is one of the things in tourism that flows from tourism and it helps you understand all kinds of other jobs because it's really about satisfying the customer and that's the basis of everything so that's our October 1st issue October 8th is going to be about open house Chicago this is where 250 architectural landmarks are open all over the city for the weekend that'll be October 13th and 14th Saturday and Sunday some of them aren't open at any other time of the year so we have the list that the Chicago Architecture Foundation has put out and a bunch of us staffers put our, some of our favorites I had two unusual ones I am talking about Cliff Dwellers which was an arts club it used to be on top of Orchestra Hall and now it's moved next door it has a view of Grant Park and the lakefront and the museum campus and farther south the reason I like it is it's a hundred year old literary arts club they still do scholarships for younger artists um, years ago they had a collection of Native American pots from the southwest and in, in their library which I thought was a great use for a great architectural or a great design thing to put in a library I did it myself and then I went to this club and found out they did it they sold a number of these pots at auction a couple of years ago in New York they were museum quality and they raised six figures so I thought that was quite interesting kind of an an intercultural appreciation that I liked the other was uh, there's a fraternity in Evanston they were founded right before the Civil War and when the men went off to war they were afraid they'd all die their fraternity would die so they gave their secrets to a woman and after the war she said I'm a member and sure enough they quizzed her she had the right handshake she had the right answers so they had to accept her and so she's pictured in their fraternity she has a portrait with her own pin which I think is quite cool they also have some stained glass windows um, dating to the Civil War there's one of a Union soldier on one side and a Confederate soldier on the other and they're both pensively standing with their hands on their muskets wondering about the battle the next day and above them is Christ with his arms outstretched and he's saying Pax Boviscum which means peace be to you which to me is kind of poignant so that's our October 8th issue and after that we'll be doing our concert guide and we're looking to some other stories down the road we're looking to some Chicago Public School coverage and we'll see so it's been an honor being here for the last 13 weeks we look forward to coming again and we look forward to input from you in the future thanks a lot um, hope to be hearing from you we're always welcome for stories you can find us at 4554 North Broadway that's in Chicago near the Wilson L stop and we're also at streetwise.org thanks Look forward to seeing you again.